This is a video demonstrating the concept of friction and how coefficient of static and kinetic friction can be calculated based on the length of the inclined plane and height of its tip. Before performing the experiment and collecting data, let's have a quick review on free body diagram. First, what is force? Force is a push or pull that causes an object with mass m to accelerate. Force is a vector so you can represent it with an arrow. And just like any other vector, it has a magnitude and direction. Notice that the definition of vector doesn't tell us anything about where the arrow should start and where the arrow should end. To demonstrate this, consider this coordinate system. If I have a force of 5 newtons represented by this arrow, I can transfer this vector starting from the origin. Notice that this is the same 5 newtons of force that was drawn earlier. Since the definition of vector requires magnitude and direction, as long as I preserve the magnitude and direction, then I can slide the vector anywhere in this coordinate system. I'm not violating any physical laws because I'm still consistent with the minimum definition of vector. This important fact will facilitate our derivations later. Next, what is friction? Friction is an opposing force that originates from the microscopic interactions of the particles between two surfaces. We represent friction with small f. The direction of friction is always parallel with a surface. For example, consider this block on top of a table. The block is constantly being pulled downwards by gravity but it is not accelerating downwards because the table is exerting an upward force called normal force. The direction of normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. When you apply a force F here, there arise an opposing force called friction because of the physical contact between the block and the table. Based on experiments, friction is directly proportional to the normal force. Meaning to say, if you increase the normal force applied, then the rising friction increases as well. The constant of proportionality is called coefficient of friction and it is symbolized by the Greek letter mu. Let's call this equation 1. Now consider the case where the plane is at an angle theta with the horizontal. If this is the block, then gravity is acting on it. But friction is doing its job to oppose the block from sliding. And of course, the plane is exerting a normal force towards the block. To guide us with determining the sign of forces, let me draw an imaginary coordinate system centered at the middle of the block. Take note, I can draw the imaginary coordinate system like this. But if I align the x-axis along the surfaces, it will reduce the number of equations that I'm going to generate later. Let me separate this coordinate system and the forces from the physical setup. If this is theta, then this is also theta because these two triangles are similar triangles. The projection of mg towards the y-axis is mg cosine theta. The projection of mg towards the x-axis is mg sine theta. Now, here is the fun part. I can slide all forces in such a way their arrow starts from the origin. Let us look at the block alone. The summation of forces on the block along the x-axis is equal to zero because we assume that the block is not moving due to static friction. And even if the block is moving with the action of kinetic friction, we assume that it is moving in constant velocity and therefore acceleration is still zero. Let's call this equation, equation two. The summation of forces along the y-axis is also zero because it is neither going upward nor downward with respect to our chosen coordinate system. Let's call this equation, equation three. Returning to this diagram showing the forces, the summation of forces along x-axis are positive f because it is on the positive x-axis and negative mg sine theta because it is on the negative x-axis. I can equate this to zero because of equation two. We call this entire equation as equation four. The summation of forces along y-axis are positive n because it is on the positive y-axis and negative mg cosine theta because it is on the negative y-axis. 
We call this entire equation as equation 5. Plug equation 1 to equation 4, then rearranging, we will have equation 6. Substitute equation 5 to equation 6 and we'll have the expression for coefficient of friction. This is the experimental setup where we are going to slide the block on the wooden board. We vary the height of the plane by sliding the boxes horizontally or adding or removing boxes during the experiment. For the materials, we will need the following. A wooden board or any flat surface that is not frictionless and don't forget to measure the length of the board. In our case, the length of the board of the inclined plane is 60 centimeters. A wooden block or any object in your home you can use. Plastic sheet. I just grab a plastic cover somewhere. A rubber sheet. Here, I just used a keyboard protector. A meter stick. In, in my case, a rusty metal ruler. This is the setup for the friction between wood and wood. L here represents the length of the inclined plane and H here stands for the height of one end of the plane. For static friction, we gradually raise the end of the plane and record the height at which the block starts to slide down with constant velocity. For kinetic friction, the plane is slowly raised while applying small nudges to the block. The height is recorded when the block moves at nearly constant velocity after being tapped. The heights from three trials are recorded and their mean or averages are calculated. To calculate theta, recall that L is the length of the plane while H is the height of one end of the plane. Using simple trigonometry, the angle theta is equal to arc sine of H over L. Given the angle, we can now calculate for the coefficient of static and kinetic friction. This is the setup for the friction between plastic and wood. After three trials for both static and kinetic friction, we now record the result. This is the setup for the friction between rubber and wood. After three trials, for static friction, we now record the result. And after three trials for kinetic friction, here are the results. If you find some of the things here helpful, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel.